Welcome everyone, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today we will cover text extraction from images using Google Gemini API with Google Colab Notebook. If you need an API key, you will need to use this website. Feel free to reach out on my socials if you have any questions. We will cover a few examples today discussing the pros, cons, and considerations while performing these tasks. We're going to need the API key for Gemini. Go into Google, type Google Gemini API. We could scroll down. I try to always avoid sponsored links and you'll see this entry. Get a Gemini key. Click that. Let me zoom in. You see this little blue box. We're going to click that. If you want to do a quick practice, you could just run this curl command and input your key, but we're going to avoid that today. We're going to get this page that opens up and we're going to get this create an API key. You're going to click that and you're going to create a project name and then you're going to generate a key. I already have a key. It's going to be right here and I'll just click that copy it. Then the next thing you need to do next, go to Google again, type in Google Colab. This first entry you're going to see right here. Click that. It opens up. We can start a new notebook on the left hand side. Click the key. Put your key in here. Name the key. Give access to the notebook. Scroll down. Copy this. Replace this piece right here with the key that you're going to have. And then we're going to be able to get started coding. Pause the video, do what you need to do, and we'll get into that real quick. Now that we open up the notebook, we can get started. The first thing, if you've never used this before, you need to do a pip install for the Google Generative AI in order to call the Gemini API. After you have that, we need to import it in. And since we're dealing with images today, we're going to call in the ipython.display. If you look on the left, what you'll need to do is have your API key accessible through this notebook and copy the name of your API key. When you're dealing with a file within in the Jupyter Notebook environment, if we're uploading anything to it, you're going to use this little bit of code from google.colab import files, and then we'll do a file.upload. This is one of the generic images we're going to use today, and I'll explain why, but it's pretty important. The next thing that we need to do is the user data so we can actually call the API key. So here's my actual key name that I created, and you're going to use user data.get. So it's fetching this key. And you need to initialize this by doing the generative AI config. So it's pulling our API key. And then we need to call the model that we're going to use. I'm using the Gemini 1.5 Pro-001. This was used particularly because some functions that you want to run later need a stable version number. And that's why I'm using this. But it's not always imperative. Also, the above code when we're uploading the file, you can do this any way you want. Calling in environment variables, you can also take and other ways to stream or collect your data from the cloud. I just did it because this is simple and easy. Next, I'm interested in calling in this image. And this image was really important because it has a lot of different text, pictures, and it's not a uniform picture. And what really had me interested is on this right-hand side, it has a lot number and a best by date. And this was something I was really particular about using for this because it's not just a flat image. It's just imagine taking something off of a shelf, doing it, taking a photo, and uploading it and there's contours within it. So here's our first example. I need to zoom out a little bit so we could see the context of everything. So I brought this into the code block again. It was unnecessary, but it's just to illustrate and emphasize what's going on. I'm calling the model and I have a text prompt of whatever I want. My first prompt was very particular in saying, can you include the best by date with all the information and extract and analyze it from this image? When you want to call this function, you're you're going to generate content. You're doing this by calling model dot generate underscore content, then your parentheses, brackets, and the notation from Gemini AI. I mentioned this in the last video. You want to put your image first and then the prompting, and then you can do a result dot text to show your output. And there's some interesting things I want to mention with this after we go through this a little further. I have bullet points with what is contained within this product. It has the ingredients as the supplements, the product description, and then it says it has more of the label information. It has warnings, suggested use, and then additional information. And you can see our best by date and our lot number. Now I wanted to run this again and change up the prompt a little bit to figure out what's going on with different prompting. The packaging calls it main ingredients. That's why I use those words. I said from the main ingredients, are there any health concerns? 
options. Also, is this an expired product with the best buy date? Now, I tried formatting this in different ways and each result gave me different answers later. So I tried to just copy it as one word as it was in the notation on the side of the packaging. And then I wanted to ask, are there any additional claims for these ingredients? Just like we did before, after I take my prompt and my image, I do the model.generate underscore content and print it out. And this gave me some interesting information. Here's the information for the main ingredients. They're all organic, tells you a little bit about them. For instance, if you have high vitamin K in your diet, it could cause blood thinning, blah, blah, blah. Some really good information with this. Then there's potential health claims. It says in this text though, it cannot determine the product expiration and suggest you should look at it. But this is interesting because it looks very correct, except this is not. It does not say the 23rd. It just has 04 slash 2024. And we'll go look at that in a second. But it at least tells you in the text to go and verify for yourself on the packaging. And then it gives a summary with what's going on here. Don't consume expired foods, blah, 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 pregnant supplements, all that junk, right? So then I said, all right, let me try to run this prompt again, change it up just a little bit. Actually, no, I ran the same prompt again. But if you notice something, when you keep running these prompts multiple times, you get different output. And I had to think about what was going on here because if you're building an application or you wanted to have something for a user, you need to consider this because it could give you some problems. Here's another thing. You see that Best Buy date again? It came out kind of weird here and it's definitely trying to suggest it was on the 23rd which indicates it's expired, which is a good thing it says here. And then it has disclaimer stuff on the packaging and, you know, other things. Back up to the image real quick. So if we scroll, it does not say the 23rd. It just has a slash. I have no idea where it got that from. I'm not sure where it got it from on this packaging. I'm also interested if you could get barcodes somehow, which would be an interesting project. Now that I'm mentioning the fact that these will give you different results on different prompts, this explained why. So I Googled it and said, why does Gemini AI produce different answers from the same prompt and it's because it's doing a sampling so this is a non-deterministic nature these models are based on neural networks with billions of parameters the output is strictly deterministic meaning the elements are randomly evolved so the variations of output with the same prompt are very likely and this is from university of florida and it was an article that they wrote so i thought that was really interesting so if you're trying to build something i would suggest tailoring your output in a specific way that one generate sentences of information that will change from prompt to prompt. That's just my suggestion for that. We can also run more than one image at a time. You could run a list of images. So what would happen is in here, you can just do image, image, three etra call it in as a list you can iterate over it whatever you want to do the other thing that i want to mention last you need to think about ways to speed this up if you're trying to produce something viable for customers you need to streamline this process where you're either streaming the data or figuring a way to do parallel processing or both that's just my suggestion but that'll be the conclusion of this video but if you thought that this was valuable content or you learned something consider hitting the like button it's free and if you like to see other content similar to this or coding related, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I got to do a shameless plug. I have a buy me a coffee and a Patreon, or you could do a channel membership. It takes a long time to make these videos. They may not be the best, but I do try. I look in the comments for suggestions or try to answer questions if I can, but I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Run free and dive into the sky. Hear the wind crying